Oh, <laughs> hey everyone, Eric Thompson here. Hope that you're uh, doing well. You know I'm doing well because I got my uh, my watermelon in my watermelon bowl. I got a spoon. I got a uh, full thing of cinnamon here to put on my watermelon, which I love. That means one thing and one thing only. That's right, BTSD. And so let's get right to it. Here's uh, here's Jenny with part three of the book to screen differential concerning Twilight. Okay, in this video she's going to tackle. The third installment, naturally, Eclipse. Hey, actually, let me show you something real quick. Check this out. Here's a sneak peek of what's uh, to come. It it didn't even, like, Harry Potter had blue eyes from the moment we met him, and then we, we look at Lily a little later on in the series, and she has these amber eyes. And you know what? In the mirror of Erised, she's in black and white. For all we know, she could have had blue eyes, but she ends up having amber eyes later in the series, and we're all just like, why did you do that? That's going to be after Jenny is finished with uh, Twilight, and then we're going to jump straight over to Rachel, who's going to take care of uh, Harry Potter for us. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, hopefully, we're going to try some different things with the BTSD when we get there. But for now, Jenny, take it away. Give me that. Get it. There. Hey there, all. It's me, Jenny, and we are back with uh, this week's book, Eclipse. Uh, book and movie number three. Um, I have, as you can see, a new background. Uh, all my little Twilight posters. Twilight, Eclipse, or well, New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn Part 1, and 2 behind me. I uh, thought I'd change it up a little bit. Um, so, Eclipse. Next book that we were talking about today. Um, with this one, uh, let's start with question one. Um, is the movie a just representation of the book? Um, with this one, I say yes, um, but, um, as we'll jump straight to question two, uh, was there anything in the book that wasn't in the movie? Yes, there was a little bit. Um, that I think uh, was missed out on in this book. Um, well, in this movie from the book. Uh, first thing being uh, the bonfire uh, with Jacob and the werewolves, all that history and stuff like that. They kind of just did a brief, let's go over, you know, just this one little bit here and not go into it uh, as much as they did in the book. Um, which I think is a bit of a bummer. You kind of miss out a little bit on um, some of that history if you're only watching the books or watching the books. <laughs> if you're only watching the movies and not reading the books, um, I really think they could have done eh, just a little bit better than than what they did with that one. Um, also, uh, with the big fight. Now this is the thing that drove me the most insane. The big fight with the newborns. Um, you see them die completely different way than you did in book one and movie one. Um, being as movie one did amazing uh, with how they killed the vampires and did it exactly as the book described versus book three if um, and movie three, if you're watching all three movies in order, you get to Eclipse and, you know, you're, you're watching all these newborns and everything die and you're like, hold on a second, uh, they didn't die like that in the first movie, um, <laughs> they don't turn to glass or whatever it is that they turn to ice or whatever and then whatever. Anyways. That drove me a little bit crazy. I don't know what they were thinking. It's completely idiotic, um, especially in the middle of a series, to just all of a sudden be like, oh, well, hey, the vampires need to die in a new way now, um, just because it looks more cool. It looks more interesting. It was a lot cooler the way they died the first time. Um, <laughs> uh, anyways, that drove me absolutely crazy. I don't think they should have changed that at all. Um, next thing that drove me nuts about this book that 
I think they should have done a heck of a lot better was um, the interactions um, and um, connection, uh, like emotional connection between Bella and Ed, um, Bella and Edward and Bella and Jacob, the three um, together. Um, that was a very complicated um, emotional love triangle of sorts. Um, love hate triangle on a uh, on that one actually being as Edward and Jacob hated each other and Bella couldn't keep her hands off of either of them. She she couldn't let go of either of them. Um, uh, but the the thing that drove me most crazy was um, that weird uh, scene with all three of them in the woods, which didn't happen in the book. Um, that was a little strange, um, especially since that's supposed to happen right around the time that um, uh, Bella has um, is starting to get ready for wedding stuff and, and whatnot. Um, and actually, in the book, she's actually just gone over and talked to Jacob and. Um, <clears throat> She basically breaks his heart and her heart all the same, um, all in the same go. But she knows what she's got to do. You know, she's she's got to be with Edward, and um, so she goes home and she bawls her eyes out. And of course, she has to pull over because she's crying so bad. And uh, Edward drives her back home and then stays with her all night in her room as she cries. Um, and then decides, you know, the next morning, okay, we're gonna do this. And they go over and see Alice and. Alice shows uh, Bella her dress and happy day. They start wedding planning um, and then they go into a little bit very, at the very end of the book where uh, um, you get a glimpse into Jacob's point of view. Um, you get to see what he's feeling, his emotions, and um, uh, you get to, to see a little bit of interaction there with, with Jacob and Leah as Leah tries to in her own way help him um, get over this whole emotionally, you know, insane situation. Um, and in the, in the movie you don't really get to see that. You don't get to feel that that connection with him at the end of movie three. Um, yeah, movie three. Um, and, and you don't get a lot of that emotional connection and um, emotional conflict that that's there between um the three of them and um it's it's kind of a bummer that that you miss out on that in in the movie um i know they did their best and they put as much information in as they could but um but i do i do miss some of that um some of that extra um interaction um emotional conflict emotion in general um especially between those three main characters. Um, anyways, let's let's jump to um, question three. Um, do you prefer the book or the movie? On this one, it is a very tight race between the two because, I mean, they did stick as close as I'm sure they could, even though they screwed up here and there. Um, with this movie, they, they stuck to it, I'm sure, as, as best they could. Um, but because of that extra emotional conflict and that, um, you know, that just more that the book gives you, I definitely have to go with the book. Um, they did okay with the movie. I, you know, I really do think they did okay. But you just get more from the book. It gives you, it gives you so much, so much more, um, experience the experience is, is a lot bigger um so we will um end it here uh that is what i have to say for eclipse and next week we will start with breaking dawn uh so i don't know if i'm going to do one video or two um but being as this is a very thick book um <laughs> we will start with that uh sometime next week. All right. Ta-ta. See you then.